But thanks for listening. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We Say Things, episode 35. My name is Suns Fan. Joining me is Cinder, and this episode is sponsored by uh, absolutely nobody. Cinder, and how was your New Year's Eve? But it could Eve? be you. But it could be you. It could be. Actually, could be we did discuss doing a Patreon in the future. I'm not sure how people feel about that, but... Uh, yeah, that definitely could be them, then. It could be you, guys. <laughs> uh, Cinder, and how are you, my friend? It's been so long. We had to skip a week because I physically could not speak. You heard me. <laughs> I love. Okay, so basically, what went down was Shannon asked, and he was like, "Hey, do you, what do you think? Should we record it? Would people hate it?" I was like, "I really don't think we should record." He sounded like, "Oh, what did you sound like?" Death. Um, you sounded like death meets a an eighteen year old who has been yelling nonstop at a party for three days in a row. Like three your voice days. was that gone. It was wow. Your voice was so broken. It was crazy. I don't it's interesting. Know, the last time I've heard someone with that broken a voice as that was, that I can was tell you, broken. it was when I was at DAC. Oh, well, because <laughs> you know how I know that because I lose my voice very often, and it's not because I scream, Cinderin. So when I get a cold, yeah. probably one out of three times, thirty-three mm. percent, I will lose my voice for no apparent reason. Laryngitis. I have no idea why. That's it's very... always been that way. It's I've just never heard of it before, so it's very interesting. Is that a rare condition? What laryngitis? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I get it probably way more often than a normal person, but it's, yeah, that's what I, I mean. Like the common. condition that you get it all the time is oh, kind of yeah. weird. It is weird. I agree. Um, but anyway, you were actually willing to record, and I said no. So for the record, you wanted to push through with it. So you weren't like, Send, I have no voice. Let's not record. I was actually like, Shannon, you have no voice. Let's not record. Well, that's the thing. Like, um, it, it was just a cold. It's not like I was bedridden or anything like that. But yeah, yeah my yeah. voice did sound pretty bad. But um, I'm sure people, I was like, people might find it funny because you sound stupid. <laughs> but people might also switch it off because it's very hard to listen yeah. to. So for let's an just... hour long, uh, first five minutes maybe. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Maybe. The first few minutes would be fun and then you're like, why am I doing so, yeah, this we to had, myself? We had to skip the week, obviously, and we're doing this yeah. at a kind of a weird time, uh, not the usual Tuesday, because you, Cinder, will be going to Bukovl, Ukraine, for the We Play Minor. Congratulations, yes. sir. You must be super excited to go skiing. Do you ski by any chance? I've never skied and I probably won't there either. Great to hear. Just terrific. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm boring like that, I guess. I don't know. So we haven't decided whether we, we will be doing the next episode while he's in Ukraine or if we wait till he gets back. I mean, it's not that much longer, so we might just yeah, wait. Let's see. Well, technically, I am coming back on Monday the 13th, so we could record regular time Tuesday the oh, 13th. Okay, so let's so do that. It let's kind of aligns on. pretty well. I think that's okay. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, depending on how trashed i am from all the travel when i get the, home the quote-unquote travel yes I, yeah I so the goes. thing is, the thing is okay so it's in ukraine right which isn't yeah. that far from denmark and to you it's like oh travel i would have to go from the u.s right yeah but this trip is actually pretty damn long how long i'm flying to copenhagen then i'm flying to kiev then i'm flying to bukovo or mm -hmm. sorry i'm flying to copenhagen and then to kiev and then from Kiev to Lviv, and then a four-hour drive. A four-hour drive? Wow. Yes, that's how far out it is. Apparently, there's four Goodness. hours to the nearest airport. So, Bring like your the, diaper. The trip takes me... I think my total travel time to this event is 14 or 15 hours, actually. Right. So, it is... I mean, it is quite the journey, actually, this time. Well, but, congratulations. I can't wait to hear the stories. Uh, we play is hilarious though because they. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what or how you react to Media Day. It's always a treat to see what they come <laughs> up with. It's always something crazy, super cringy, but in a good way. Uh, so yeah, that should be fun. Uh, also, PSA for everybody that we forgot to mention this last time, but the A to Z series that everyone's been asking about has been has begun. Reborn nerd, right? It's called A to Z Challenge Reborn. We have. I think one episode up on the channel right now, and we actually recorded two more recently, and it's going to be out from now on every Monday. So podcasts are on Tuesdays generally, and A to Z on Monday. Um, yep. 
Another thing, I could talk about this at the end, but I just have to mention it. The Witcher. This is no spoiler, by the way. Mm-hmm. I know you haven't watched it, Cinder, but it's, I thought it was really well done. Uh, I've watched the whole season. Really? Yeah. What? We watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. R- and did you like it? Mm, I thought it was pretty good. Wow. I like it. I, okay, well, it's too early to talk specifics because I don't want to spoil it right. for people. Like, if it was in Bruges, we can talk specifics, so we're not going to. Uh, I will say that I have also read a bunch of the books. I'm on book four right now. The writing is kind of meh, honestly. Not a huge fan. Some of it's okay. The, the story, though, is very interesting. You know, the, the characters and whatnot. I thought they did a pretty good job in the... I mean, the books... Or the, sorry, the series is totally different how they match up everything, but mm-hmm. I understand that's what they have to do to make it work for, you know, that format. But I do enjoyed you, it quite a bit. I'm just curious. Do you think the writing... I, I haven't read the book, so I wouldn't be able to tell you this, but do you think the writing is bad or do you think the translation is bad? Because all of the uh, books are originally in Polish, right? So right. Is the I translator mean, renowned for being a good Polish to English translator or... I have no idea. I, mean, I would I, imagine I, there's pretty few of them, right? Yeah. I, when I read it, I, I mean, I knew ahead of time that it was originally Polish. I didn't, haven't really read anything. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like maybe there's a couple words here and there, but nothing. Well, it's, it's just the style of writing is, I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's not like one of those like, holy shit, I got to keep reading. Like it's never like that for mm-hmm. me in the book where other okay. books, that is the case. Uh, I will give a special shout out to the song in the mm-hmm. series. Uh, Toss a coin to your Witcher if you guys haven't heard this. My absolute favorite song of this last year. Holy shit, I cannot get it out of my head. It's amazing. Great job. Um, so, bef- so what was your overall impression of it? I like it. You think it. it's good, right? You like it? Yeah, I like it too. Yeah, I mean, it had some cringy moments for sure. Um, I think overall, they did a good job. I think some of the CGI was very bad, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. That's okay. It's, you can... I think... Based on how it did, which I think is really probably did really well, they're gonna up the budget for the next season. So expect that to probably go through the roof and whatnot. But oh, let me yeah. just actually look up its ratings. I haven't even checked it. I was curious. Critics gave it a bad rating, like a fifty, I want to say, and users gave it like a ninety. IMDb eight point six out of ten, and let's see Rotten Tomatoes. When the critics well, give it a only, bad rating and users two. give it a good rating, I end up liking the movie usually. I think critics are stupid. All right. Uh, so average audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is 93% and average tomato meter is 61%. So yeah. exactly oh, that like went up a said. little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Overall, pretty well, good. as I mean, long as the audience loves it, it doesn't matter if the critics do, right? That's, That's right. That's a really good rating among the audience. 8.6 on one and 93% on the other. Yeah. When audience and critics agree... I tend to not like the movies, believe it or not. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of movies. I'm not going to get into it because people are going to get mad at what movies I really hate. Marvel movies. The non-rated R Marvel movies I really hate. And I feel like they pay the critics to give a good rating. I do not understand how these movies are getting good ratings. They're so fucking Give an bad. example. One of, the, one of them. Just to give me the, the name. The first two Avengers. The second Avengers specifically is one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. What like, was that genuinely. one called again? I don't know. It was awful. There's Wasn't so many Avenger, cringy there's moments. There's one with the winter, winter something, and then the last one was called Endgame. I don't know, Cinderin. Don't Wasn't ask. There's just so many. Avengers so Win- many. Winter Soldier or something? I, I recently had to power through the last two Avengers, actually, and they were okay. Oh, I'm not going to say they America. were terrible. Never mind. Yeah, Captain, America, Captain America, America, I never I never watched those ones. <clears throat> uh, but yeah. Two, I, I like the rated R's, Avengers too. Two, actually. You know? Whatever. The rated R versions are much better. Anyway... I know we usually get started with Dota 2 news here, Cinder, but I have a story to tell, if you don't mind. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, so before I tell this story, I need to preface it, okay? I am known for something, generally, as a personality, and it has to do mm-hmm. with my bowels, okay? I try to actually, believe it or not, and I know a lot of people maybe don't think this is the case, but if you go back and watch anything that, anytime this topic comes up, you will notice I almost never bring it up myself anymore. I've been trying to stay away just so I'm not pigeonholed into that, you know, people consider that very lowbrow humor, okay? Right. This is not one of those times. I will bring it up this time. (laughs) So I want to talk about something that happened recently, but first it wouldn't make total sense until I tell the story that happened before. So this was about a year ago, okay? We're in LA visiting Nikki's family. Uh, we have some Thai food, which is my favorite. I have a nice Thai iced tea, which is also one of my favorites. 
and we need to go catch a plane. So we're at her uh, sister's house, and the mother offers to drive us to the airport. So we get in the car, and we're like 10 minutes out, whatnot, uh, five minutes, let's say. And I start getting these horrendous gut pains. So for people that don't know, I probably have IBS or something related to that. I don't know what it is. Slightly lactose intolerant if it's whole milk only, Cinderin. If it's mm -hmm. any other kind of milk, I'm probably fine. I was honestly thinking I was going to shit myself in the car with Nikki's mom there, okay? And it gets right. to the point where I'm like gripping the seats with my hands and I'm like, you need to turn around <laughs> right now. Like right now, please. You need to oh, find I a bathroom. You're just gonna start having <laughs> convulsions. Just sitting so, <laughs> so <laughs> she turns around, and I start farting. Okay, uncontrollably, of course. Like I can't hold it in anymore, and it smells so bad, Cinderin. Like it smells mm -hmm. like death. And the whole time, apparently, and of course, Nikki is Filipino, so they're speaking t Tagalog to each other. Apparently, Nikki's mom is asking if we should stop for diapers because she literally thought. I shit myself in the car, but it was just mm -hmm. gas at that point. Uh -huh. So we get to her brother's or her sister's place and I run into the bathroom in the corner of the house and I defile that thing like none other. Okay. It's just like 20 minutes nonstop. I have to ask them to bring me Imodium while I'm on the toilet so I don't, so I can actually get up and go to the airport on time. So that the whole time I'm laughing maniacally, by the way, I'm sweating profusely on the toilet, laughing maniacally, and they can hear everything in the other room. So that's one of the first impressions that her mom got from me. Okay. Wait, so that was the first time. No, no, no. This they was, met you. No, this was probably like the third time, I want to say. Uh, okay. but it was the first time it was an intimate moment like that. Okay. Oh, so this time yes, very intimate. Unfortunately, not as, as great of a story, but I thought I just wrapped it up nicely, you know. We're hanging out with her dad. Uh, and I, we went went to Vietnamese this time. And <laughs> oh, God, Jenna, I started getting <laughs> I start getting these, uh, Vietnamese is my favorite right now, by the way, uh, but I start getting these horrendous gut pains in the parking lot. And I have this thing where I try my best not to go to public bathrooms because it disgusts me beyond belief. I can, like, I can do it if it's like an emergency, but at that point it wasn't. So we get in the car. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, we need to hurry, please. So we start driving. We get to her brother's house at this point. And in the drive, you know how when you get close to it, like your mind, like you've been holding it in nicely but your mind knows you're close and it gets so mm -hmm. much worse. You know that? So we're in mm -hmm. the driveway walking to the door and I'm just waddling to the fucking door and I'm like, oh my God, I can't make it. Oh my God, I can't make it. So her dad is just standing there by the door waiting for somebody to open it and I have to back up a bit into the driveway and I just, I, believe it or not, I don't shit myself. I start farting again, just like... Mm -hmm. I've been holding in whatever this is for like 30 minutes and it turns out it was just gas and that's never happened to me before ever in my <laughs> life where I think I'm going to shit myself and it's just gas. So that is another impression that her family has. So yeah, those are my bowels so, in a nutshell. So her mom thinks you can't control yourself <laughs> and her dad thinks you're a hypochondriac. <laughs> something like that yeah okay and the ironic Jenny, okay. thing about this Ser serious question though, right yes so, what is the is the saying is it uh is it it's not a psychopath that who who is it you say you there's you know this saying is it just an idiot is somebody who does the same thing over and over expecting a different result <laughs> it's not an idiot right it's what's the word you use there it's not I, a I don't know i don't like, know what the word is but sure you know that I saying know. though right it, no i don't but i understand what you're saying Okay, Don't gonna... Google it. For God's sake, Cinderin. Just let it let it be in the moment for once. Albert Einstein is widely credited. Here it is. With saying, okay. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and uh, over again, but expecting different results. Shannon, okay. that's you with eating Asian food. Okay, just it's not the Asian un food. Unless though. you're not ex unless you're not expecting a different result. Unless you're like this is part of the package. I love this food so much that I'm willing to risk. Well, that is my true. In laws' life, <laughs> in order to have this fucking tie. That is true. I am willing to risk it because the food is so good, but it's not the food. Believe it or not, it's things I drink that I don't know have milk in it or something else that I don't know of. But the funny well, thing then, is, Cinderin, then just have water. My no, I I can't do that. I'm American. Just have we Coke. don't drink water. 
Yeah, I had Coke. I don't know what. I, anyway, Grenadine. that doesn't matter. So the funny thing is, my brother has even worse problems than me. He mm. legitimately shits himself once a year minimum. He's a grown man, by the way. He's five years older than me, and he has two master's degrees. And he sh- he could be the president of the United States someday, and he shits himself. I think he's and too educated to be the president of the United I States. I think right now. that's true. That's a good point. Uh, the current one shits himself in other ways. But uh, I was thinking about having him on because we used to have this thing back in the day where he comes on and tells stories. So if people like this story, we're going to do that uh, because his are genuinely the most hilarious I've ever heard. Okay, let's get started. Let's get this episode started. <laughs> let's talk about other shit. <laughs> we have some Dota too. So Double Lift, is this a player? Is that his Double name? Double Lift, yes. Okay. Yeah. He's one of so, the most known NA players. In League of Legends. So he says yes. that there is a 0% chance Dota has more mechanical skill ceiling than League. Of course, as usual, a lot of uproar regarding this. It feels like one of those gotcha phrases that just gets clicks and whatnot. What are your thoughts on this? So first of all, I don't even know how this discussion started. Like <coughs> what made him bring this up? I don't know. Did somebody I didn't care enough to... In the inter- I didn't investigate. see or hear an interview or whatever, uh, whatever started this, but... I, I don't I don't know if he just randomly he's like, yes, I'm having this interview, so I'm just going to shoehorn it in there. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, <laughs> there is no chance Dota is more mechanical. So somebody probably had an interview with him and asked for a comparison. Targeted question, most likely. Whatever. Yeah. Um, it gives clicks, right? Um, you played a lot of League, so I'm actually really interested I did. to hear what you're saying. I played it many years ago, though, uh, but I did play it an extensive amount in the early days. I think... So it's a it's like a hot topic here. Uh, you know the comparison that I always uh, or not always, but a comparison I've drawn in the past. You know, if back back in my day, you couldn't my be uh, you couldn't you couldn't be a teenage guy and like Justin Bieber, right? That was just like, right? If if you did that, that would be terrible. Or Nickelback for 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 no reason. Yeah, you know, like that. So if you're a Dota player, you can't likely you kind of have to hate it, even like mm. which. Honestly, for me, it's just pretty stupid, <laughs> and the vice versa, right? If you're a league player, you can't enjoy Dota. I mean, why not? Right, right. It's well, two different games. You can have fun with both, or at no. least admire what the other game is doing. Technically, but if you're in, no. not to not to stop you here, Cinder, but uh-huh. technically, if you're a league player, you're not allowed to yeah. stream Dota or anything like that. So there are actual rules on that. Oh yeah, side, if you're right? a profession, if you're a professional and you're under contract, and that contract has limitations, then sure. But I mean, Continue. you can still, if you're a player, Shannon, not if you're a pro. Okay, thank you. Um, not like UNCS. Um, so if <laughs> hey we brought it up again. <laughs> um, so basically, I would say what it boils down to it to try to make it simple and short. Um, League of Legends has a lot of mechanical finesse. Uh, it's a lot about very quick sidesteps, quick reaction times, quick spell casting. A lot of micro engages all the time in the laning stage. Is a lot more about poking and prodding. Where Dota mm-hmm. is a lot more about hard commitment and bigger strategy. Like, if I had to explain it in like two sentences, I would say League is more about the small things and Dota is more about the big things. So in League, it's all those little pokes and prods who wins those and gets a small advantage. And Dota is like the macro game is way more complex. Uh, so for his statement, honestly, I can't really, can't really dispute it. I, I wouldn't necessarily say League has more mechanical skill but i also don't think it has less it's just different uh the way it's mechanical what i will say for sure is that there's way more strategic depth to dota like no question uh and league of legends has been becoming very like it's just a flat flatter game in that sense flat earth game yeah all right so not flat earth (laughs) flat earth game so (laughs) i want you to give us a quote that we can use okay so as the title quote is Well, it could be the title of the episode or just to get clicks in general because that's what his comment is, right? So come up with something similar. Hmm. You can do it. There is a 0% chance Double Lift knows what he's talking about. Oh, shit. Oh, snap. (laughs) Wow, that'll give so many clicks and that's totally what I just said before. (laughs) Uh, So... (laughs) You see, like the th- the thing that's always weird about situations like this is that it feels like you need to have a certain opinion before you even talk about it, right? Like mm. me agreeing with him will have people be like, "Wow, man, you're not 
you don't have enough allegiance to Dota. Okay, guys, I've played it for 25,000 hours. I have plenty of allegiance to my game, but that doesn't mean I can't have perspective. And there was such an... Like, the rivalry between these games is both good and bad, because I think it's really good that, it, you know, it's it generates attention. It has people talk about it. It has people feel proud of their game and whatnot. But it can also get to this level where it's just, like, stupidly petty, almost, where it's like, we have to be better than League at every turn, or League is like, we have to be better than Dota. I mean, both games can coexist and be good in their own ways. Um, I would say my overall experience with League from those many years ago, I think the game got more and more streamlined, more and more flat. Their design choices made the game way less interesting, and the biggest problem was, at a competitive level, there just isn't enough happening. The games are super low kill amounts, super little action-packed, because... Mistakes are extremely punishing, and the gameplay kind of just dictates a very stagnant, right. low creativity kind of play, whereas Dota is more like a sandbox where you can come up with all sorts of crazy shit. And on that on that note, it's kind of been some of the criticism. That's actually a pretty good segue here, because some of the criticism in, that Dota has been getting lately from a lot of people is that it feels like some of that sandbox feeling is slowly going away. Now you have outposts, you have bounty runes, this like dedicated objectives in the game that are more or less required mm -hmm. to fight around. Whereas in the past we only had Roshan, now there's extras. And I think that can be both good and bad because now you incentivize people to do shit on the map. But at the same time, you kind of take away that strategic element of playing slow in some games or being wise and split pushing or... You know, it feels like right now playing split push is exceptionally difficult because it's so much about those big brawly early team fights and the games are very fast. So I think it's kind of fair to say that Dota has been streamlined a little more recently than it used to be. Uh, and I don't think that's the goal, actually. I don't think that's what Valve are want to do. Uh, but they want to incentivize people to, you know, have fun, right? Mm. Uh, so it's like it's a really delicate balancing act and I think it's super hard. I think Ice Rock has a very difficult job in balancing this game. Um, I think so. part of the reason that they're doing that, again, I'm not going to pretend to know much about League of Legends. I remember I was very excited for it originally, and then I got into Han, and then League came out, and I was like, this thing mm. looks awful. It's just an art style thing. I played three <laughs> games in my entire life of League. One thing I will say, uh, as far as the mechanical skill, I have, you know, I'll just go off of your expertise because I have no clue. But mm -hmm. I think the main reason the game is successful and more popular than Dota is the stuff that Valve doesn't do for the game, right? Like right now they're implementing stuff that makes it more casually friendly, for sure. Like neutral items, just everybody gets more farm essentially. Like it, it's better for the game in terms of just casual people having fun, wanting to not be stressed about the game or whatever the case may be. Of course, they still have a long way to go for that. But a lot of that, like very slowly, like talent tree, like everything they've put in like the last three years have made things more friendly for the casuals, right? So from League of Legends standpoint, I I don't know. It's It just feels like it's a very... Like the reason that they're super popular is because they were first to do free-to-play, mm -hmm. the monetization, and the way that they did monetization, even though if I look at it just as a black and white situation, I think it's garbage, but it makes sense why it works because you feel super invested in all the money you've spent to get all these characters, all these cosmetics, whatever the case may be, to where... Should I try Dota 2? Yeah, it's free, but I've spent all this money on this game. I don't think I'm going to... And all my friends play it. It's just... It feels like a hive mind mentality almost. Um, but obviously, my side is very biased. But And then it, I think it also comes down to like what parameter do you use to, <clears throat> to determine which game is more successful, right? Because League has a bigger player base. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Whether you can 100% trust the numbers they release and how they calculate and whatnot, it's a different story, but <coughs> I would be shocked if they aren't. The numbers should be way bigger than Dota, obviously. Yes. But what do you measure the game's success on? Is it player base? Is it profit for the company? Because we technically, League could have 10 times more players than Dota, but turn less of a profit because they also have way more employees working on the game. Mm -hmm. And I think the average Dota player spends more money on the game than the average League player. And that might surprise you, because you're saying that you need to buy characters and stuff in League. But the average age true. of the Dota player is mm. higher. The average the age, average Dota agree, player yeah. has more income, has more yeah. money. If you think about it, how many people a year buy the compendium and pay to level it up a good amount? I think a lot of Dota players spend over $100 a year on their game. A lot of them. 
very very the battle pass certainly helps i would i mean i i'm not gonna say that you're outright wrong like think about that how much money like a hundred dollars in league i don't know how many skins that buys you or how many heroes but i mean at some point you have all the heroes right Mm -hmm. but in dota they keep turning this profit every year with the battle pass there are and that's just every year right the dedicated players there are so many dedicated players in dota that have spent over a thousand dollars in the game or over 500 Mm -hmm. that is the same as buying 10 separate titles AAA titles, right? right? That's if you have a million players that do that, just to throw a random number out there, that's you know, that's a pretty damn successful game. You actually um, think that profit is the like is that your opinion though? That the profit no, is where it, the success just, lies? I'm saying it depends what your perspective is. If you're what the is company your making the game, if you're if you're the company making the game, right? Because you need to consider you were saying there's stuff that Valve isn't doing right. Well, from Valve's perspective, they might exactly be doing it right because mm-hmm. they are getting so much money out of having so many uh, so many fewer employees than their competition, right? It's true. If you can have 20 people working on a game compared to several hundred, and your game makes the same profit because at the end all these people need to get paid and everybody's enjoying themselves and the game is still flourishing that's that is a true statement but i would say that that hurts you long term because look at league for example yeah you have more employees i don't know what Mm -hmm. profit they make compared to valve and whatnot uh not including steam or anything obviously because steam is just his own entity yeah but I mean, Valve definitely makes more money than Riot. <laughs> That's... Yes, of course. But of course at the do, same time, but... you have all this loyalty now to the brand of Riot. Now you see them come out with uh, or announce all these other games, and automatically everyone's going to be attracted to them. Do you think everybody that plays Dota 2 is going to play Half-Life Alex? No, not at all. Those are hardcore FPS people that have been obsessed with Half-Life for over a decade, myself included. I'm a Valve fanboy. I've liked all their games, but that's not the case for everybody. I think that right. Riot, in term, in that specific scenario that you're discussing, is doing a way better job because they are getting the loyalty of not only more people, but people in that age range is super valuable going forward as well. Absolutely. I think that's probably... But I also don't know if Valve are trying to do that. That's the other thing. Like Maybe they are playing to a different segment because if Valve are trying to target 13 to 17-year-olds... They're failing pretty hard, I would say. If that's oh, they're what they're obviously actually not trying doing to do. Yeah. So I think they're they are kind of holding on to this market segment of the older players that have, like I said, more disposable income, have more of a history with gaming rather than getting into it. And that is their perspective on it. It there's nothing that Valve has done in the last ten years that makes me feel like they're trying to bring up the next generation of of video gamers, right? It's right. just not what they're trying to do. So is that a good or a bad business decision? I don't know, but it's very clear from like what you're saying is absolutely true that League has done a much better job at get, garnering the interest of the young players. Um, so I, I don't know the bottom line. I don't know what the target mentality is for Valve to be able to say whether they're doing a good job or not overall. Um, but considering they've made <clears throat> relatively minor overall like macro changes in the last five years, it leads me to believe that they're pretty content with what they're doing, right? And yeah. maybe that's just because Steam is ridiculous, right? Like, that, it's, it's a combination maybe. of having this backbone of but, Steam where they have all this money coming in all the time and the way that their company is structured, right? People can do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. So they work on passion projects. It's not any loyalty to the company itself necessarily. Uh, but from right. my perspective, I think, like from my personal criteria, like obviously Dota, I think, is a way better game than League, not even remotely close. Yeah. But I think League is clearly more successful than dota in almost every aspect minus the prize pool of ti of the biggest tournaments so it has uh, more viewers it has more i don't know if it has better player retention again we don't really know the numbers there might be a lot of people that uh lose interest as they get older or find something else to do but i don't really see a reason to believe that their retention is worse than dota so maybe it's similar they should be getting way more new players just because of advertising and whatnot um, yeah. So again, it's kind of down to the profit margin and just like, again, would you consider a success factor how good the game is? Because that's like subjective, right? It is subjective. Like, yeah. In theory, who cares how good we think the game is if there's a lot of people playing it? Then you can't really call that a su- success criterion, right? You'd yeah. be like, it's the better game, but you know, whatever. So yeah. yeah. 
I think that's fair to say. Um, and I think one thing that League gets as an added benefit is they get a lot of free media. And I think that's really, that's probably underrated in this whole, like when people talk about the games and what they're doing, uh, a lot of the times the talk is Valve is not putting in as much effort in advertising or well, any at all, or marketing the game, whereas League is pumping that really hard. And the, obviously the payoff of marketing your game is more people hear about it, but you also get other people talking about it. Like in yeah. Denmark, for example, if people are talking about video games, I'm like, uh, I play Dota. Oh, what's that like? And then my second thing is I'll say, have you heard about League of Legends? It's like <laughs> yep, that. And same. they say yes, right? Yeah. Yep. So it's because people have heard about it in the news or they've read about it in the newspaper or they've seen an article, whatever it is. Like it's when you market your game that hard, people talk about it in public. And that is just, you know there's all that free extra attention that you get. And Dota doesn't have that because we have one event a year where there will be, you know, big media coverage, even in Denmark. Like it will make uh, maybe not headlines in the new, big newspapers, but in local new, newspapers, it will make headlines or it'll yeah, make like the, a secondary story in the big ones, right? The issue so, from a marketing standpoint is that's very fleeting, right? That's a two-week exactly. period where league is just constant yeah. year-round, feels like. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh so Garter, who is a streamer slash pro player in the Dota scene, has yep. now made an announcement that he has left for League of Legends. So this is a good segue, like you said. He has a twit longer. You guys should check it out. Uh, he complains about the Tier 2 scene and Tier 1 scene poaching issue where players, if, they, if a team that kind of like a ragtag group of players has, finds any mm -hmm. success... Their best players would just get poached by bigger teams just constantly. It's just a constant stream of that, which I can tell you from my experience is 100% true. Um, yep. The Tier 2 scene being pretty much non-existent from a monetary standpoint, like financial backing and whatnot, despite the community saying they want to help it, nobody watches it really. Um, he also complained about the the last straw, He's as he called it, was the MMR system changes where he can't choose his role. Uh get stuck in games like i think he wrote that he'd get stuck with like somebody playing 4k or 4k mmr person wanting his role and there's nothing he can really do um so yeah what, do you, what did you think of his twit longer so <clears throat> i think a lot of the problems he highlighted are very real it's a lot of the stuff that we've talked about on previous episodes like many weeks ago as well like instability uh is there enough money in the tier two scene for people to actually pursue it can you trust orgs to pay out um, are there enough opportunities to compete as a tier two player? If you do make a, get a good result in an online tournament, will it actually pay you out? Like there's so many, so much uncertainty and so many questions. And the whole poaching thing is also very real. Like Dota is trickle down basically, or I don't know if that's what you would call it. That's probably the wrong word. Um, but the top basically dictates everything more or less in the, in the pro scene, which yep. I feel like is pretty natural. I think it does that in any sport. Like if, if it's there's an, an amazing extreme, though, player, right? if there's an amazing player playing in the second division of football, he will be scouted out by a talent scout by one of the best teams and he will be drafted right to that mm -hmm. team. So uh, I don't think that in itself is a problem, but the issue that there is in Dota is that for those clubs to get those players is kind of free. And the other people in the team just get left behind with nothing. Mm -hmm. There's no contractual guarantees. And it's tricky because, you know, the tier two players will be complaining that they don't have contracts and it sucks that their players leave. But what if it was you, right? What if you were the talent that got a chance to play for Team Secret? Wouldn't it suck to be on a contract then? Like, you know, it's, it's this weird... <clears throat> thing and the honestly the biggest problem we've talked about this so many times by now i'll just quickly mention it again the biggest problem is that there's not enough sustenance in tier two there's not good enough tournaments to play you don't get enough opportunities because right now this the year is dictated by the dpc for the most part and the teams that are doing well in the dpc well guess what they're the teams that people want to watch so they're also the teams that get the invites to the mm -hmm. non-dpc tournaments so you're kind of watching for the most part across the year you're watching the same 20 to 30 teams like most of the time there will be some odd ones out that qualify for your uh once in a while minor or major which is great and that's what people are playing for right it's that opportunity but in the grand scheme of things <coughs> dota doesn't have 
like it's not even close to having three digit profitable teams like where people can actually live off it compared mm-hmm. to his player base uh, i don't know what that's like in league um but obviously what gardner says in his tweet is that he's going to full-time pursue league because he's looking for that stability and that professionalism in the tier two scene which i will more or less guarantee you is way better there um in terms of you know academy teams or uh i think they have like a second division system where you can uh, qualify to get into first division like there's actually a league system that has that at least they used to be there's a ton of structure challengers structure. division or whatever yeah they they have like a structure that's more similar to your sports league yeah. basically which means um, that there's also so, more restrictions so it's a give take absolutely there's way more restrictions uh and he's hoping that by playing full-time he can go pro in league uh and can transfer some of his skills what i will say for sure is this guy will be way better than your average league player in a very short amount of time but I don't think you can necessarily just transfer I am a tier two Dota pro to I am a tier two league pro in half a year or a year, maybe ever. The games are very different and the skill set that is valuable is different. Hmm. And if you're playing against a player base of 10 million other people, then you need to have that X factor, right? Even to make it on a tier two team, you need to... In Dota, it's fucking hard to be a tier two Dota player even. It's really difficult. There's like so few players if you think of the player base, you're in the 0.001% this guy is. And now yeah. he wants to be in the 0.001% league. I, I wish him best of luck. He seems like a great guy, and I hope he makes it. But you, the thing is, <laughs> so again, this is like the, the Dota community's expectation is probably like, oh, league is an easier game. He'll do great. But it just it isn't like that. And I feel like that one might be hard for people to swallow, that it's a different skill. It's what not if just he does an easier though? game? It's not you, that would be great. Would be okay, great. so he could be in theory the first mm-hmm. professional Dota player to become a yep. professional league player. And if yep. he does it relatively quickly, that's going to look pretty bad for league in theory, right? In terms of it being an easier game. Um uh, I remember when I was playing Han, when Han was in mm-hmm. his prime, the quote-unquote best player of the time was named Chu. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, I have. Uh, he was the best mid by far in the game. He was very famous. And all of a sudden, he switched to, to League of Legends. And he immediately got like top 100. Of course, this is, it was less players back then, but mm-hmm. it was still really impressive for him to do that. And he did it like super fast. And not saying this is related necessarily, but he came back to Han and just was never that same guy again. It's like League no, of Legends killed his skill. He also never made skill. it big in League, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know really exactly how far he went, but I know he, he made it to like play... the leaderboards. At a pro level, right? So, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that, that's that's another thing, right? Like, what's your level of ambition? It sounds like what Garter wants to do is to play professionally, right? Mm-hmm. And you can climb the leaderboards, but <clears throat> within the game, again, that's a different game itself, competitive to pubs, just like in Dota. Um, I think something that Garter probably has that will be really valuable for him in his efforts here is he has competitive experience. I think. To an extent, he should have a his biggest advantage over other transferring Dota players to League is that he has played so much competitively. And it's for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's the work ethic of playing in a pro team. Uh, it's learning how to be a teammate and learning how to communicate. Those skills are may sound like secondary skills, but in the high level of Dota, they're actually primary. Like mm. It's not enough that you're just really good at the game. If you're a dick or if you can't take criticism or if you can't communicate properly, that will hurt you in the end. And Garter has tons of experience with that playing on all these tier two teams. So that is possibly, if he has the skill, that could be what pushes him ahead of, let's say, other aspiring league players that have not played Dota before. I think that might be his biggest advantage. Um, But yeah, let's see. Let's see how it goes. I mean, it's it's a cool story, right? If he makes it. It would be cool. Yeah, I I hope he does. Um, but if he doesn't, I also, I, I don't think we should care to the extent like draw any conclusions at all based on his success. No, small I think sample people size. want to, yeah. but like regardless whether he makes it big or not, I don't think that says anything about the games themselves. Agreed. Um, so, but it would be it would be awesome to see him be successful with it, and you know, that kind of story. I don't know if it's good or bad for either game. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean it. I guess it's, you can say it's. I said it was bad for League. It might be bad for Dota actually, because <laughs> you're 
they're kind of pushing out a player because of the system in place, right? He's, he can't stay within the system. And then he goes somewhere else and is successful and it gets tempting for other players. Maybe. Yeah, potentially. Anyway, moving on. Uh, True Sight premiere Cinderin was announced. Oh. OG and Team Liquid will be in a live studio audience in Berlin January 28th. It's going to be hosted by OD Pixel and Fogged and also joined by Casey and Slacks. There was a little bit of a YouTube uh, trailer. Uh, I'm excited. These things are awesome. This Although the finals is... wasn't that hype, really. Right? Yeah, the finals were kind of a beat down for the most part. Um, doesn't this surprise you a little bit, the wording you just said? It's hosted by Odie and Fogged, joined by Casey and Slacks. Yeah, it is weird. Wouldn't you expect it to be the other way around, where the hosts are, you know, the TI hosts, and the people joining are the casters? It would be funny if it's not host if they're not going to be there, and it's just the they're just saying that because of the the replay commentary <laughs> attached to <laughs> the finals. Yeah. I, Thanks, OD and Fogged. Appreciate it. I, I don't think OD and Fogged have any hosting experience whatsoever. I think they've only ever been commentators, and it is a kind of different skill set. I mean, they're obviously very good at talking, right? You have the. Well, what does that even mean, though? Hosting, that. like, is it going to be a like they're going to show the movie at this the last, theater, and then what? The last True Sight premiere, there was a Q and A or something. Yeah, it's like it, it's more of a traditional screening setting right where you show the you you open the show you present it to people you're like welcome this is what we're going to do today blah blah blah, and then you watch it and then there's the interview section you take questions from the audience this stuff i mean it's not like very advanced or complicated stuff but you would imagine that casey and slacks are way more experienced with it right so yes um yeah. it's just it's just an interesting choice if this is the if the wording suggests that it is like you just said right um, I'm sure they'll be fine either way. I don't think it's that big yeah, of a deal. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying they're going to do bad. I just found. Cinder and thinks Odie Pixel and Fog are going to shit the bed, right. guys. Great title for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We got a couple of good titles now. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm looking forward. Well, anyway, to if it. you're in the neighborhood and you didn't hear about it, it's January 28th in Berlin, and the tickets are 10 euros, so very affordable prices. It is very affordable. Go and see it live and meet the players. And honestly. I think it's great, and I think it's cool that the second place team is there. Can I just say that? Because I think yep. a lot of the time in sports and esports and whatnot, um, of course, it should mainly be about the winners, and it is always going to mainly be about the winners. But I feel like a lot of the time, second place or third place or whatever, like people that got really far in a really hard tournament, kind of gets forgotten. Uh, I think some sports do a better job at this. Uh, for example, in tennis. There is generally mm. a loser's interview always when the Grand Slams are finished. The second place player will be interviewed and the first place player will be interviewed. Where in most esports, it's just second place team. The, the finals is over. The second place team just leaves. Like they just disappear. It's like they weren't ever there and accomplished something great yeah. by reaching the finals. It's all about the winners always. Yeah, I like the way that tennis so, does it. Now so that you I'm think of, really now happy think that there is a second place team there. First of all, to, you know, Meet the players. This is a great opportunity for a lot of people. Liquid is a, you know, uh, or well, now it is Nigma, right? It's a huge brand and a huge, powerful player base. Like, or their, yeah, their team, their team has a lot of history that people want to meet. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just so much. Um, I feel like there's value in hearing the perspective from the losing team always um, of these finals and acknowledging that, you know, only one team can win, but that doesn't mean everybody else failed. Because with that perspective, then there's 17 teams failing every TI. Yeah. And, and I wonder being if a TI is an accomplishment and then getting that far is, you know. I wonder how much in detail they're going to go towards yeah. not just the finals, but like the lower bracket run from Liquid and whatnot. Because mm -hmm. that would be probably the more interesting thing for me. Uh, because the finals themselves, like you said, it was kind of like the game one, I feel like Anna just threw. He didn't buy back, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, uh, I mean, that was probably then, more of a team thing, but they mistimed sure. it, basically. Yeah, and then... They could have won just, that game. They, they could have won that game, and then they yeah. swept them anyway, so after that, so... Yeah. Uh, and it, there wasn't really any of this, like, usual West versus East. I know that's kind of weird to say, because uh, it doesn't really matter, but it kind of does, you know? It's, I think it's There's good a rivalry for the game there. when different regions are represented in finals, or at least in Generally, top three. yeah. It's, it's just good overall. <clears throat> but now that we're in a new year, Cinderin, remember we talked about this a while back. A few players uh, took a break 
Yeah. Uh, does that break come to an end now? I mean, we talked about OG. They'll be coming back shortly, I believe, for the... Is it this next This next they minor? They'll be playing yeah. for the next major qualifier. Yeah. Which they would have to play opens, as far right. as I know. So OG, we have Sumail, who <clears throat> we still don't know if he's just under contract. Is he just that hard to buy out? It sounds like it um, might be the case. I don't know. Wait, so which team is he contracted with? Well, it would be EG. No, because he played for a different org later. He well, he rung for, for them. He didn't Quincy officially. Crew. Yeah, it was a temporary right. thing, though. Oh, was he was he uh, leased? See, that's we don't know the details, but okay. we know that he's taking a break now. But he was trying to mm -hmm. play then, and our speculation was why wouldn't they just keep him over? Who do they replace him with again? Can't remember. But oh. like that's a perfect situation for him because he's with his brother and whatnot. It sounded like they really wanted him. He really wanted to be there. It was only like a week's worth of games. I don't think that's enough to establish no. whether that's going to work. Hard so to I think he's I probably think... under contract. Um, but I think the wording of his tweet, as much as that is to go by, I think he said that he is out of EG, but that could oh, just be okay. from the team perspective, not from the contract perspective. I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, either anyway, way. speculation, we don't know. But yeah, Samael should be coming back. I think he said he will be playing in the new year. That was what he tweeted a couple of months ago. So mm -hmm. he's probably maybe either has something or has something planned or whatever. Um, then there's a couple more worth noting and mentioning. There might be more than these. They were just the ones that came to mind for us. Soxa took a break. My boy. When did he take a break from? TI. Since TI. Okay, so yeah. that's a pretty long break. Soxa has a pretty incredible achievement. He posted a screenshot, um, which people were celebrating and some people were hating, which I found was, thought was kind of funny in itself, of him having three accounts as the top three EU support MMRs. Which obviously means he has two Smurfs that he has leveled up the right. whole way to be top three. And people are like, wow, that's an incredible accomplishment. And then some are like, that's very hypocritical to say when you guys hate people Smurfing. <laughs> so it's well, a bit like... You, you know. can have both worlds, right? I hate Smurfing yeah. as well, but this is fucking impressive. Let's be it's real. a pretty that's incredible really... achievement. It's, yeah. That takes so much effort and time. I always thought that he... I mean, right? he was obviously so. on DC, so I'm a bit biased. But I thought he was one of the more underappreciated uh, players for the team and... His skill, his skill level is so ridiculously high, and as a teammate, I think he's very easy to play with as well. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think he takes a little bit more of a backseat than he should. He doesn't talk as much as he should, but... but that might be a strength. It, it's better than the alternative, the the polar opposite, for sure. Right. But uh, it just depends on who he's with, if it works but or not, right? This is one of the things that in team dynamics that I think the community, I mean, they how would they know, right? But um, a lot of the times when people put together their dream teams or whatever, they just think about who do I think is the best player in each individual position. You put those five together, they might not work at all. And it's because I think every team needs a reasonable amount of voice, right? So Saxa is a more, uh, like you said, a more backseat kind of guy. He's calm. He doesn't speak up a lot, but when he does, it's obviously good stuff. Uh, he calls his things in the game, but I don't think he's like, he's not a leadership type, right? No, definitely And not. you can't have too many and you can't have too few. So actually, if you're playing at this level and there's a lot of people that are like very vocal, not being very vocal is an asset because yes. that means if he gets in a team with low vocal players, he's actually a fit. Um, and I think that's that's one of the things when you look at these top teams in the world that there are like maybe one or two leadership figures, but there's also more chill guys in the team that will call their plays, but not be like super vocal or very demanding, so to speak, mm -hmm. in, in the gameplay. And I think if you look across a team like OG, right, it's pretty clear that it seems like the true leadership of that team is probably Seb and No Tail. Mm -hmm. And then Clearly. you have players like Jerex and Thompson are... I think are pretty chill and calm guys that actually aren't extremely demanding. They just, they do their job, they communicate, but they aren't like leading the ship, so to speak. That's what it seems like to me anyway. Yep. Because I think if all of them wanted to lead, they wouldn't win TI. <laughs> um, so yeah, you need that mix. And that's what some of the top teams have really cracked the code with. And for me, Soxa is one of the absolutely best pickups you can get as a team right now. He's Agreed. super skilled. Um, as long as you understand what you're getting and you're not getting him for a leadership position, I think he is top three support pickup right now. Probably. Position four specifically, I think. His uh, 
I remember seeing yeah. his tusk early on. I'm like, this is genuinely the best tusk I've ever seen in my entire life. He easily. is very, very good at position four. So, uh, Speaking of the number Absolutely. four, though, the last player I want to discuss is S4, huh. who yep. disappeared off the face of the earth. I remember with Midas mode going no, on, no Cinderin, he's doing. he would not reply to direct messages. You'd see he would read them on Twitter. His own alliance team, like as in his org, and mm-hmm. friends would do the same. He would read them and never respond over a month span. Nobody knows where this guy is. Will he ever play Dota again? He, is he just taking a break? He tweeted Merry Christmas. So oh. he's alive. Okay, um, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> and I think a month ago, I saw him streaming some CSGO. Um, he he's is, really good at CS. He is really good at CSGO. And I think he is probably, off the top of my head, the only Dota 2 pro that could go pro in CSGO if you wanted to. Like, yeah. There are other Dota 2 pros that are also good or in like maybe close to global level or maybe even global, but when I watched S4 play, and I'm not an expert at Counter-Strike, but when I watched him play, I could tell that, you know, no, I this played guy with actually, him. if he pushed for it, he <laughs> could go pro, I think. I played with him, and I thought the same thing. I'm like, he's almost as good as me. Just almost there. Just a little <laughs> bit more practice. <laughs> no, he's really good. Almost yeah. as good as your peak in 1.6. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, as far as what he's doing, no idea. Uh, he hasn't tweeted out anything about that he's looking to play competitively, or I've heard no rumors about any sort of team. I think he was playing with Sweden and WSG or something. Uh, there was some land that he was playing just now, I think, or whatever. Uh, but that's it. Like, there's nothing... I genuinely don't know. Like, maybe he felt like he just needed to take a really big break, reflect on things, and maybe he's not coming back, or maybe he is. Uh, but, yeah, nobody I expect does. him to come back. They always do. I think S4 will play competitively in something. That's what I think. I think he's just very... You've heard of the term game IQ, right? Which mm-hmm. some people throw around without really thinking. I think this guy is just very intelligent about games. Um, so he's the kind of player who, if he wants it and there's a new game that comes out, he can look to go pro, especially because he's proven himself that he's really good at strategy in Dota. He's good at drafting, so he has that aspect. He's good mechanically, and he can play shooters, clearly. Mm-hmm. So, and I just think he's a competitive person in in gaming, so he he will find something to do if it's not Dota. I hope it's Dota. I really like the guy. Um, but yeah, I yeah, he's a good figure in the no community. Idea. Yeah, he's he's great. All right, let's wrap up this episode with uh, some random ass shit, Cinder, as usual. <laughs> okay, what did you do for New Year's, my friend? How's the dog? Um, we were chilling at home with our dog, as you can imagine. And so here's the funny story. We have been preparing so well for New Year's, right? Or especially Susie had. So first of all, from the breeders, the dog is very... Um, they've done an excellent job. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but it, we, the dog was in so good condition when we got it. Very uh, already very Mint condition? Like potty, potty training. It was conditioned with walking on different surfaces, with loud noises, like what dishwasher vacuum cleaner gunshots all this kind of stuff. <laughs> classic american package normal danish um, yeah yeah so um they had been fireworks training it a bit and susie had been fireworks training it too it's actually it's relatively straightforward with a puppy right you put on some firework sounds on the tv and gradually over time increase the volume so the dog gets used to this as being something that's not dangerous you know it gets mm-hmm. some treats it's just a very chill time when there's fireworks going on so we get to new year's eve and i'm like in addition to all of that training, then people obviously shoot fireworks too early. I don't know if you do the same in the U.S., but there's always like these random people that fire a rocket illegally, on the 20th yeah, and on the twenty X X. But there's just a couple that shoot some stray stuff once in a while. So that also gets the dog, you know, primed a little bit. It's kind of a blessing in disguise. Usually, it's annoying that people shoot fireworks out of time, but for the dog, it's kind of good training when you think about it. So he was pretty well prepared. We get to New Year's, and guess what? He gets sick on the day. Mm. throws up he has diarrhea Mm. Um, so he was so well prepared for new year's and then he had to get sick and guess what he slept through (laughs) midnight he slept through all of the fireworks because he was so exhausted from the day i think basically from 11 30 until the just the whole like primary fireworks time he was just out that's great in his pen so I have a reason to believe he would have done that anyway if he wasn't sick, but it might have, you know, contributed. But he did yeah. a great job on New Year. So that was my New Year. Like, it was all about the dog, and that's what happened. So it was very chill. Um, very nice. 
we'll see what we do next year. You should come visit next year, Cinderin. Oh, American New Year. It's nothing special. <laughs> no, probably not. I was uh, visiting Nikki's family as we talked about earlier. Uh, <laughs> that was anything special, just you know, hanging out and watching the TV. So because that's what people do. They some, wa- you did some other fireworks. No, we we didn't see any fireworks this time no, around. Yeah, okay. uh, you did. Yeah, the other. I, I understand it now that you bring it, bring it up. You know, something I learned a few years ago that just disturbs me. You know this, I don't, well, you guys maybe don't know, but every party I've ever been to in America, I think just everybody does it. You watch uh, TV during New Year's to know the time. And it's always yeah. New York, okay? It's always the New York mm. special and it's always just repeated. So it's on delay when it's up to you. So it's like a three hour difference for us since we're in California. These people... Stand out there apparently the entire day, and they wear diapers. Did you know this? They what? literally wear adult diapers because there's nowhere to go to the bathroom. You are standing outside in New York City winter in like this big crowd for literally like 18 hours, and you are literally shitting yourself. What do you think of this? This is not me contract. making this up. This this is uh, normal people. People volunteer to go. Like, oh, this is such an exciting thing to go to. Let's go watch the New Year celebration oh, you're not in saying Times the Square. Hosts. You're just saying the people that go there for fun. <laughs> the hosts, I'm sure, do not wear diapers. <laughs> oh, I, I actually, I genuinely thought that the hosts were hosting countrywide for like 12 hours straight, and therefore they had to just be on set all the time. Yeah, the host, the, the host is like 10 minutes till he, he got, we got 10 minutes to, excuse me, all right, I mean, 10 minutes to go. That, honestly, I found Dude, that, that believable. Be <laughs> I, with the audience, that sounds weirder to me. Like if you're there in a professional <laughs> setting and you have to make this broadcast for all of the US across all the different time zones, I mean, uh, fair enough, right? You're doing your job. Why would you voluntarily go there I don't to know. celebrate New Year all day I don't just know. watching the same broadcast over and over? Am I missing the point here? No, like, they're, they're not watching the bro- They're watching it live. They're actually watching it live. Well, yeah, okay. But they're watching it being broadcast live. That's what I meant. Right? Yes. So they're out there. And that means every single hour they do the broadcast again or what? Because then the next time zone has reached. Well, New the York. next time zone just right. watches the replay of what happened. They don't actually do it live again. Wait, so so why are people so people are just standing there to rewatch it live? Good lord. I'm confused. Okay, this no, is what I happens. I genuinely don't get it. In I order to get, get close enough to the stage, you have to be out there super early before mm-hmm. the celebration even begins, okay? This is live. Right. Once yeah. it's live, you can go home. Everything's done. But everybody on the other time zones are watching a replay of what happened in New York. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. Okay, so you're watching the replay of people shitting I... yourself. <laughs> okay. Oh, so that was the point. <laughs> I never okay. under I've never understood why you would volunteer to do that. It makes no sense to me. It sounds miserable. In the cold. I I, I don't get it. I don't get I it. I mean, it does generate heat though. That's true. There's other it ways to generate actually, heat that involve not shitting yourself though. Well, yeah, but if you're out there anyway, it might be a blessing. <laughs> Cinder, what's coming up for you this year? Finally, I'm shitting myself. It's like, it came finally. (laughs) Dear Lord. Oh, this episode is so much about shit, dude. I'm sorry I had to. Uh, What's coming up this year for you? Anything special? Uh, What are your plans? Well, for now, Book of L, like we talked about. After that, we'll see. I mean, we're obviously still spending a lot of time on the dog. He's still very young. He's 13 and a half weeks now, I think it is. So lots more to do with that. Um... Apart from that, just um, Dota stuff. Hopefully, I'll keep playing. Will you be on other That's episodes it. of We Say Things by any chance? Is that a plan of yours? Yes. Okay. I will Good. continue. I'll be here next week on Tuesday. Good. Well, well the week after next week. I'm waiting with technical. bated breath to know if the episode <laughs> after that you'll be on. Uh, for myself, Cinderin, since you're so interested in knowing about my life, uh, just trying to... Revive Dota Cinema, I guess is the best way to put it. I okay. came, uh, by the time they watch this, uh, we'll have come out with a video, hopefully, um, resolutions for the channel itself. Um, 
think a big part of the reason why the channel has kind of gone downhill is because I've just been doing other projects. So I want to invest more time into, you know, making things more consistent. A to Z is part of it. Uh, doing hero guides again, which is something we haven't done in a long time. And the biggest project right now is our mod. Uh, mm. It's called Path of Guardians. It's a three versus three mod based off of ARAM. Yep. Uh, which, of course, is a League of Legends mod, but was inspired from a WC3 mod. And yeah, it's we've been working a lot on that. We're hoping to come out with that in like February or something like that. So hopefully that goes well. Uh, other than that, just cool. chilling, you know, just chilling, Cinderin. And there will be custom heroes for this mod eventually, and you will voice one of them. Okay. Do I it's get happening. to pick? No, I've picked for you already. Oh, dear. It's going to be okay. a three-headed something. I'm not saying what the creature is. And it will be voiced by me, you, and Slacks. You're welcome. Can I be the world. clever head? You, I mean, obviously. It's Thank going to be you. like two complete idiots and one smart guy <laughs> controlling. <laughs> it's going to be a oh, techies sure reimagined. Slacks will be perfect. Yeah. All right. And what are your New Year's resolutions, Cinderin? Uh, I don't really do those, but I guess that's kind of boring. It is boring. Um, Please. So my simple one, which is also kind of boring, we need to get back to the gym. We've kind of put it on hold mainly because of the dog, right? It takes so much time in the start. Uh, and I would like to get back to going to the gym at least twice a week. Wow, um, twice a week? Outside of, outside of that, Dota is obviously still, you know, the same as always. So it's not really a new resolution, so to speak. Mm -hmm. usually new year's resolutions is when you make a big change in your life and so far the biggest change in my life in the last few years is probably this dog and that wasn't really for new year right so my new year's resolution is get things back to normal <laughs> kind of, that's always a good thing kind of normalcy reverse, is great it's kind of a reverse resolution but it'll come with time by itself it's just dogs take time so yeah that is true that is true yeah. My New Year's resolution, uh, revive Dota Cinema. And my New Year's resolution from the past five years is lose weight, and I've only gained it. So I will not have that as a resolution. Uh, we'll just have to... <laughs> just admit defeat. Yeah, I've, I'm done. <laughs> I just can't do that anymore. Uh, bread is too delicious, Cinderin. I just can't do it. Ugh. So yeah, that is the that is the episode. So... As usual, okay. Cinderin. Now that yes. you say, wait, now that you say bread is so delicious. Oh, I love it. There are many types of bread, and there is mm. bread that is not very heavy. Carbs, in I love terms carbs of weight in general. Gain. Yeah. Do you like all bread, or is it specifically like calorie heavy white bread? Is uh, it the breadsticks? Because the breadsticks from whatever, what's it called? The fucking Olive Garden? Yeah. You've been Extremely to Olive Garden? overrated breadsticks, by the way. Mega overrated. When did you go to Olive Garden? Interesting. Uh, once or twice when I was in California what? with oh. BTS, I think, or something. Really? You didn't that like them? Was, I think out of all of the places, like out of all of the trademark US chains that I went to, that was probably the single most disappointing for me, I think, overall. Huh. It was, everything was very mediocre. And I think to an extent, it's because a lot of European countries have a pretty solid uh, pretty solid experience with making traditional Italian food. So mm -hmm. I went there. It's a big chain. I wasn't expecting anything extraordinary, but it was kind of like, it was probably worse than average that you would get going out in Denmark for Italian I would, food. I mean, I would agree with you. I actually I don't. don't think I think the Italian food there is pretty mediocre as well. The, the breadsticks bread were so overhyped. I, I don't know. I understand that they're overhyped. I love them. <clears throat> But it's not because they're high quality. It's because it's so cheap and they're endless. And right. I really like the salty nature of them. I'm not saying they're super high quality, but I do enjoy eating them. They're delicious still for me. I think you just get bread and soup, have... bread, soup, and salad, and it's just endless. That's what I do every you know, I time. I think my biggest problem with American bread of that type is it's the same problem that I have with the way you make uh, pretzels. If you get pretzels when you go <clears> to a bowling alley or whatever, it's always this greasy. They're like, there's too much oil. The bread is soft. Like when I hear bread stick, my mind is like, that sounds crispy, but it's not. And I get that. Like right. the American default bread stick is not crispy, but 
like that type of bread to me is not as appealing. It's like very fatty, very oily. And if that's okay. the bread you like, then it's hard to lose weight. <laughs> First and foremost, Cinderin, do not rate our pretzels based on bowling alley pretzels. Get that shit out of your head. Okay. okay. Have you tell been me, tell me to then, Wetzel tell me then, Pretzel? Are American pretzels, are American pretzels crispy or soft and oily? It Okay, what is I this? think they're soft and oily. When you say pretzel, what do you mean yeah. by this? You're talking about the bread? Do you or know the small the original, pretzels. You know where they you know where they originate from, right? <coughs> no idea. The original is German. It's called Brezel. Brezel. It's a type of it's a type of bread. It's a salty mm-hmm. uh it's a salty type of bread that is traditionally uh kneaded, is that the word? When you bind yeah. the bread together because it has a, a specific shape where it has three holes. You have the same shape, I think, right? It has the three holes. Mm-hmm. Where it's like it's twisted into itself, it's kind of heart shaped. Yeah. Um, the German bread is very different from the American that I. It's I've more tried. firm, right? It's firmer. It generally yeah. it has okay. a tendency. It has more snap, and mm. it's more about saltiness than fattiness. Okay. That's the classic German one. Okay, then and we're I, just gonna. The German ones I've had are just better. Interesting. I I, I tried two or three in America. I think I won't say I've had a traditional German pretzel, but. I do love the oily and greasy pretzels that we have here, Cinderin. Not bowling alley pretzels, mind you, but Wetzel pretzel, <laughs> Auntie Anne's, delicious, god tier pretzels. You have to take me for one of your good ones, and then maybe you can change one. Cinderin, you need to come to my place for a week. We'll do one episode, and we'll film a lot of content of me taking you places to try, and we can rate we'll, them together. That's we'll the dream. Five episodes and f- 50 pounds. If I get a sponsor to sponsor your flight here for a week... Would you do it? And I maybe mean, some would. money for food. I love, I love food. Okay, I do. Sponsors out there. Uh, what's an airline? Southwest things. Airlines. We eat things. Episode one. <laughs> we eat things. We can start a new podcast. This could be you. <laughs> so, Cinderin, I know that you okay. promised me that you would watch this movie. Have you mm-hmm. seen In Bruges? Uh, I didn't have time. I was watching The Witcher. I cannot believe you watched eight episodes, eight hour long episodes of The Witcher, <laughs> which is a great show, but you can't watch an hour and a half. That's an episode and a half you could have sacrificed to watch fucking In Bruges. I you better not watch time. it on the plane to we play I either. I'm going to be so <laughs> angry with you. If it is on the plane, <laughs> dude, you know I, I'm watching it. I will so disown you if you that watch it on the so plane. so funny. Oh my God, I actually hope it's You can't ruin so your bad. first experience with it, your first oh, impression. Laughing so hard. Yeah, actually, it's true. It's going to ruin my impression because I'll just be laughing at the concept <laughs> of me watching it instead of actually watching the movie the whole time. I'll just be, I'll just just be so imagining much. your responses to everything the whole time while I'm watching it. All right, well, no, I, I also that will not happen. Joker. I was busy watching The Witcher, Shannon. That's fine. That's more forgivable. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I guess the next episode will be the Tuesday uh, after Cinderin gets back from the minor. Have fun at the minor, Cinderin. It, uh, it's going to be cold. I've been to Ukraine during this time. It is whew, quite cold, let me tell you. I think you. it's like minus five right now, which is pretty fucking cold. Do me a favor. I don't know if that isn't Fahrenheit. It's probably about the same, actually. It starts to no, match no, up. Way, I think it's way less still. Is it minus 10 that it starts to line up? Let me see. Why are uh, we Googling uh, at the end of the episode? Just let me end this, for God's sake. 23 Fahrenheit. Okay. Um, please take some pictures of Media Day. I'm begging you. And I'll try tag to remember. Me. I'm very bad at taking photos. I, or, well, I'm... I'm good at technically taking photos. I'm bad at thinking about doing it and remembering it. I'm just well, there in the moment, and I don't really take pictures very often. All right. Well, you're going to be at some crazy place. They always change the venue for the We Play uh, Media Days. And you're going to be thinking, wow, this is insane. I've never been a part of anything like this before. Then you'll think of me because that's insanity incarnate. And that's when you will think of taking a picture and then tagging me in a photo or tagging me in a, in a post. Okay? Thanks, Cinderin. Have oh, fun. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Until next time, Suns Fan and Cinder and signing out. We say things that don't mean anything, but thanks for listening. Yeah.